Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue with the symmetric groups. I will actually focus on the symmetric group on n letters. So, let us recall what we did in the last class. Okay. So, we started with the non-empty set X. and denoted s of x by the set of all bijections from x to x the set of all bijections from x on to x and we actually uh, seen that so with respect to the composition this s of x becomes a group okay so you take the binary operation to be the composition of the maps, composition of maps or functions. Okay. So, then this S of x with respect to this composition is actually a group and we, al we also saw most of the time it is actually a non-abelian group. Okay. So, I actually left you to check uh, all the basic properties for example, uh, associativity of this composition of maps and uh, existence of inverse and so on. So, it is not hard once you know how the composition is defined, what are all the bijective functions, then it is easy to verify this is actually a group. But when we actually restricted to a finite set, we all we saw that uh, okay so up to like only the action of this group matters okay intuitively we are talking so i i told mathematically speaking up to an isomorphism it is enough to actually restrict to your set to be just to 1 to n where n is the cardinality of the set okay so because of that so later i will explain so, why it is enough to consider this particular set, but for time being, so because of that intuitive argument that I gave uh, using that we just focus on the set that, that is just 1 to n and then see how this symmetry group actually can be understood. So, <coughs> we take this i n, so this is again a standard notation, this you take it to be uh, this 1 to n okay, where n is given natural number. So, that means positive integer for us. So, you take uh, this 1 to n. So, what we are interested in? We are interested in the symmetric group defined on this uh, set 1 to n. Okay. So, that symmetric group because this set is depending upon uh, this n. So, that symmetry group is usually denoted by S n. So, what is S n? S n is nothing but S of i n. So, this is the symmetry group. Sometimes they call it symmetry group on n letters. Symmetric group on this 1 to n okay. or this is also called on n letters or n objects. So, in mathematics you must have seen that we always use some shorthand notation to denote uh, uh, some of the things. Okay. So, because then it makes uh, easier for us to actually uh, write down the explanations. Okay. Every time we do not want to actually uh, tell what something means. Na? For example, you must have used integration, differentiation and so on. So, those are all symbolic things. Okay. So, those symbols actually mean something in mathematics. So, similar to that when we are working with this particular group, it is actually uh, easier to write down the elements okay. that is what something we saw earlier. Okay. So, we will actually stick with one notation. So, that is what called permutation notation that I introduced earlier. So, let us recall that. So, we will stick with that and then see how actually using that particular notation we can actually uh, perform operations in this group. Okay. Again uh, the operation is being composition of uh, maps. Okay. So, 
you start with some sigma in S n okay. this sigma is actually a bijective function from i n to i n. So, that means, so each i is mapped to some sigma of i okay. so that is what uh, we will be interested in for each i if you know what is sigma of i which also from 1 to n okay. if you know the value of sigma phi then it is clear that uh, okay, what is sigma. So, because of that we, we saw many different way of uh, denoting this sigma. Okay. For example, there is this one line notation since this 1 to n is totally ordered. Okay, so, all we need to know is where 1 goes, where 2 goes, where n goes. For example, the same data that is this function sigma can also be written as follows. We can take this one word notation as sigma of 1, sigma of 2, etcetera, sigma of n. Okay. So, either you can treat it as a word that actually has length n and then <coughs> you are recording the data. So, where 1 goes, where 2 goes and so on. So, this is just one line notation to say what is sigma. Okay. So, now once I give you this word of length n, it clearly says what is sigma. Okay. But this is something again used later in combinatorics, but that right now we are not going to use uh, this notation. Instead, we will use what is called permutation notation that is what there in most of your textbooks. Okay. So, what is it? Let us actually uh, recall. So, if you actually uh, think about sigmas, as I said sigma is uh, just a function from i n to i n. So, all I need to say where 1 goes. So, 1 goes to let us say sigma of 1 and then n goes to sigma of n. So, to know what sigma we need to know what this uh, sigma 1 etcetera sigma n all we need to know this. And of course, we also need to know what this. Uh, so, there is this order that we have fixed. Okay. So, this one where 1 goes and so on. So, this can be easily actually recorded in the following notation. Okay. So, we can write the domain on the top because there is an order I can write the domain as 1 to n. And then all we want to see is where 1 goes. So, that I can write it in the bottom line. Okay. So, first row I write the domain 1 to n and the second row I write the codomain the range. Okay. But of course, I write it in the same order where so, I will just keep track of where 1 goes, where 2 goes and so on. So, I write it like this. Okay. So, of course, I do not want to just write it and then hang it like this. So, instead I just put a bracket and then just uh, denote the same sigma as this. Okay. So, this is just a permutation sigma. So, the same uh, data that function from i n to i n can also be stored like this. So, this is the notation like I said most of your textbooks follow. So, we will follow this notation. So, now what is the advantage of this notation? So, it is easier to actually kind of uh, tell immediately uh, what will be the composition of two given uh, permutations and as well as what is the inverse and so on. So, the computation that you do okay, by hand okay, that will become actually easier here. Okay, so, let us see some example and then uh, uh, see okay, how this actually helps. For example, uh, <coughs> what will be the sigma inverse? Okay, if you go back to the definition, so inverse map is something like uh, so, you call it sigma dash. So, then the property of sigma dash. So, let us say inverse of sigma call it sigma dash then sigma composition sigma dash and then sigma dash composition sigma that should be identity. Okay. So, let us denote identity by 1. So, what is 1? 1 of i should be i for all i range from 1 to n. So, this is the identity function. So, it is easy to see that this function identity function is the identity element in our group. So, now you have the inverse, the inverse satisfies this property. So, then 
what it means? So, it means given any i. So, given any i in i n then if I do sigma composition sigma dash of i then you should get back i. Okay? So, that means whatever element is this is when I apply sigma I should get i. Similarly, if I apply sigma dash sigma of i so then that should be i. Okay, so, whatever element is this if I apply sigma dash then I should get back i. So, that immediately tells how to define sigma dash. So, basically you retrace. So, whatever the sigma 1 okay, you can define sigma dash of sigma of 1 to be just 1. Okay. So, you just trace back what, what happens. So, for example, you can define so thus sigma dash of sigma of 1 you can define to be 1 and then sigma dash of sigma of 2 you can define to be 2 and so on and sigma dash of sigma of n you can define to be n. So, whatever these numbers so they are coming from 1 to n. So, now using this you can easily say what is sigma dash. Okay. So, let us do some example and then see. So, basically what we are doing so, this is just some ordering of 1 to n. We read back, okay. If you want to know what is sigma inverse does, you just read back. So, this is some i. So, sigma inverse of i will be just 2, okay. So, that is what uh, we are actually telling, okay. So, let us do some example, then it will become clear what, what we really actually talking about. So, let us take some small example, let us take n equal to 3 and then consider sigma as follows. So, this is 1, 2, 3, maybe 1 goes to 1, 3, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2. So, this is one permutation or a bijective function from 1, 2, 3 to 1, 2, 3, okay, where 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 2. So, this is the same data that we recorded. So, what will be sigma inverse? So, sigma inverse, so you again write the domain on the top, but to read what is sigma inverse, so you have to read, you start with this 1 here and then read where it goes. So, 1 goes to 1, so sigma inverse of 1 is also 1. So, what is about 3? 3 goes to 2, so then sigma inverse of 3 should be 2. Okay, since it is a bijective function, so sigma inverse of 2 must be equal to 3. Okay. So, you can see that this 2 it actually goes to 3 here. So, you do this reverse reading so that you actually know what is the sigma inverse. So, this way I can easily write down once I know sigma what is sigma inverse. So, now uh, let us see how we do the composition. Okay. So, the composition uh, is again can be done very easily. So, let us write uh, sigma equal to some 1, 2, etcetera n and then this sigma of 1, sigma of 2, etcetera sigma of n. So, now you see that I already kind of introduced some new notation. I am writing this permutation itself as sigma. Okay. So, I am not using sigma is a function from i n to i n, the same sigma I am using it for this permutation. Okay. So, this is I can take it as definition. So, there is no harm in this. So, now you take tau. So, tau is again another permutation and then you have tau of 1, tau of 2, etcetera, tau of n. So, now what we want to do? We want to understand how this sigma composition tau actually uh, define. So, this is actually the composition. Okay. So, if you go back uh, to our uh, uh, to our actually the definition of s of x. So, you can see that this is s of x. So, given f from x to x and then given g from x to x. So, then what we did given f g we associated actually this g composition f. So, that is your f star g. So, the product okay, that is that or the binary operation 
that is associated with f comma g is given by g composition f. Why I want to do that? Because I want to apply f first and then g later. So, that is my convention. Okay. And of course, <coughs> I can also <coughs> define, define uh, this binary operation in the reverse way. For example, I can take f comma g and then send it to f composition g that is also possible, but let us not actually do that. Okay. So, in our course, so whenever we talk about the symmetry group, the binary operation let us say define this way. Some books I guess for example, Heston topics in algebra does it in different way, the other way. Okay. So, we will stick with this particular notation. Okay. So, that means, so what is the meaning of composition? So, here again, so here what I am talking about that matters when I say what is sigma tau. Okay. So, like I said most of the time when you are interested in actually writing down uh, the, the star sigma star tau, you can always ignore the star because it is understood that star is there behind. Okay. So, let us not uh, do that here because we are talking about the composition as well as the star. Okay. The star is defined to be what? Tau composition sigma. Okay. So, I want to understand how this is actually works. Okay. So, now what is the composition? Okay. When I say sigma tau, I want to apply sigma first and then tau later. That is my understanding. So, this is a new permutation. So, then you can see that what will happen to i okay, given i inside i n. So, then if you compute what is sigma comp sorry tau composition sigma of i. So, that is tau of sigma of i. Okay. So, this is the rule that we have. So, that means if I am interested in just denoting what is this sigma star tau. So, my understanding I am applying sigma first and then tau later. Okay. So, recall in the Rubik's cube also we did the same thing. When I said m1, m2, I am applying m1 the first move and then m2 the second move. So, this may not be consistent with some of the textbooks, but in this course we will stick with this actually. So, then what is sigma star tau as a permutation? That is what we are interested in. So, let us write down and then see what it is. So, first you write the domain a 1 to n. Okay. So, now you want to see where what will be the image of 1. To see the image of 1, what is this formula says? You compute tau of sigma of 1. So, you take 1 and then look at where sigma of 1 actually goes, sorry, where 1 goes under sigma and then the sigma of 1 will be somewhere here. Okay. So, somewhere here. So, that is some i let us say and that i will lie here and that i will go to where tau of sigma of i. So, that is the thing that you write here tau of sigma of i and then tau sorry 1 tau of sigma of 2 and so on tau of sigma of n. Okay. So, again let us do some example and then it will become clear. Let us take n equal to 4, take sigma to be 1, 2, 3, 4 and then you can take maybe 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 2 and then 4 goes to 1 and then you take tau to be 1 goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3. Okay. So, now what we want? We want sigma star tau and then I take 1, 2, 3, 4 as a domain and I want to trace what it is. So, I what I want to do? I want to first apply sigma and then later I want to apply tau. Okay. So, then what I am going to do? So, I will just look at where 1 goes. So, where 1 goes to 3 and then where 3 goes, 3 goes to 4. So, that is the data that I have. So, this 1 goes to 4. Sigma 
tau of sigma of 1 ok. So, that is tau of 3, tau of 3 is 4. Similarly, where 2 goes, so 2 goes here 4 and then 4 goes to 3 here. So, I write 2 goes to 3, where 3 goes, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and then so then what remains 2, let us verify whether we we'll get 2 or not. So, 4 goes to 1 here and then 1 goes to 2. So, this 2 matches ok. So, you can see that how we wrote down what is sigma star tau. So, basically what I am doing, so when I when I actually just write down this next to each other, let us do one, one more example. So, let us take n equal to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then let us say the 3, 2, 1 and then 5, 4, this is one permutation sigma and another one is, so this is another permutation. So, now if I compose them, what I do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, first I just read it like this, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2. So, 1 goes to 2 and then 2 goes to 2, so 2 goes to 2 and then 2 goes to 4. So, that means 2 goes to 4 here. Again 3 goes to 1 here and then 1 goes to 5 here. So, 3 goes to 5 and then 4 goes to where? 4 goes to 5 and then 5 goes to 3. So, here and you see only 1 remains. So, that we fill here because that it should be bijective. So, let us verify this is the case where 5 goes you can see that 5 goes to 4, 4 goes to 1. So, it matches with this one. Okay. So, that is how I am going to read. So, I am first reading, first read the, the first permutation, then read the second permutation. Okay. So, then you get the composition. So, what is the inverse? Inverse is just reverse reading. So, you start with this and then reverse read like this. Okay. For example, if I call this is sigma, what is sigma of inverse? So, sigma of inverse is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then you see that where 3 goes, 3 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 1 goes to 3 and then 5 goes to 4. Okay. So, this is the sigma inverse. Okay. So, because we are talking about composition of functions, so it is easy to check or you can do it uh, by hand using this definition that associativity holds ok and then what else is there closure is obvious ok because that is again just a composition of bijective function will be bijective and then existence of uh, inverse just to be verified and then we know that uh, uh, this uh, I existence of identity. So, what is the identity element? So, identity element is given by E I guess we denoted by 1. So, maybe we will stick with the notation E ok. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then 1, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, 4 goes to 4, 5 goes to 5. This is the identity element. Okay. This means we know actually uh, how to work with uh, the symmetric group on n letters or 1 to n. Okay. So, now there are basic questions. What is the cardinal cardinality of S n? Okay, because we have uh, started with the finite set which has cardinality n, and we looked at uh, all possible bijective functions. Okay, so you know that that must be finite. And uh, now, what is the cardinality? So your moment thought will tell you the cardinality of S n is n factorial. Okay, so how it can be checked? Maybe now like we can use again the permutation notation. So, you have 1 to n. So, if I am interested in some random sigma, so how it can be constructed? Let us see. For example, I can it is you can think like you have n boxes okay, for the range. So, this is the range. Na? You keep this n boxes. All we need to know is how you are going to fill this n boxes. So, in some particular order you are going to fill that is all. Na? 
So, you can see that the very first box that actually tells what will be the image of 1 and how many choices here we have. So, we have n choices here okay, to fill the first box and if you go to the second box, so this is the first box and this is the second box. Okay. So, you have n choices to fill the first box and you have n minus 1 choices to fill the second box because whatever thing that you filled here let us say i 1 so that i 1 cannot be filled in the second box because you we are looking for bijective functions. So, it is basically reordering or rearrangements. So, you use same 1 to n and you write it in some order. Okay. So, the first box will have n choices whatever you filled here you cannot fill it here then it become repetitive. Okay. So, you cannot use that i 1. So, you remove that i 1 and fill it with other n minus 1 possible numbers that you have in hand and that will be just i 2. So, that will be your n my second box member so that you have n minus 1 choices. And then if you keep going like this then last but one will have only two choices because you have used there are this n minus 2 boxes already filled. So, you have filled up to let us say i n minus 2 and then what you remains is just two boxes okay, and you also have only two numbers in your hand and this will have two choices i n and then last box will have just only one number that in your hand. So, that is the possibility you can do filling in that box. So, that is just one. So, that means, so when you think like filling boxes, the first box has n choices, first box has n choices, second box has n minus 1 choices and so on and the nth box has only one choice. So, then what will be total number of choices? So, that will be exactly number of permutations. So, that is just n into n minus 1 into etcetera 2 times 1 which we denoted by n factorial. Okay. So, this is uh, very important. So, you have a very important group in your hand called symmetry group on n letters and we understand how to work with that group. So, how to compose, how to take inverse, what is the identity element and what is the carnality. So, those things we have actually understood so far. And uh, later uh, I will come back to the symmetry group and then we will actually study more properties of symmetry group. Okay. And for example, we will talk about cyc cycle decomposition of given element and so on. Okay, so, that will be done later. So, now in this introductory lecture, lectures what I am doing, I am just giving you many examples of groups that are coming from geometry, number theory and, uh, and combinatorics. Okay, so, this is one such example. Okay, so, I will stop here because we are running out of time. So, I will continue with uh, uh, some more examples coming from number theory and geometry in the next lectures. Okay, thank you.